free the nip. <laughs> It is just you and me in the quietness of the house. <sighs> this never happens. I can't tell you how excited I am right now to do my skincare routine with you in silence. So I had a little sleep in this morning. It's like 8 a.m., which is a sleep in for me. The boys are up. Kurt's already gone for a surf, so he's going to take Fox out to go to the park so I can start my vlog. Honestly, that is one thing I really find hard about like day in the life vlogs. I know that's what you guys say you want to see. You want to see like me and Fox and Kurt and me training and my food and just like my everyday routine. But it's really hard with the toddler. He just like screams and grabs the camera and like it's fun for a second. And then it's really tough to actually vlog. So today we're gonna do a 2021 goal vlog. I just went on Instagram story. Instagram story, I sound like a grandma. Instagram story, I went on Insta story. And I asked you guys, would you rather see my goals for 2021? Or do you want me to share the goals that I've set myself for the past five years that have got me to where I am today and the mindset that I have today? 54 to 46. So most people wanna see my goals for 2021. So I think I'm gonna like kind of mix it up. I'm gonna share all of my goals for 2021. I sat up this morning in bed. I actually wrote them out, which is a goal in itself. We'll get into it in a second. But I split them into different categories. I wrote them all out, so I'm going to share them with you. But I also really want to share some key goals or resolutions that I set myself in the past five years that I feel like have transformed my life and goals that I think that everyone should consider or try to do. Oh my gosh, actually, before we get into the first goal, can we just acknowledge or can I talk about my hair? One of my beauty goals for 2021, let's kick it off with natural hair. I'm trying to go heatless with my hair, especially leading up to our wedding. We're getting married in May. I am so bad with my hair. You guys know. I pull it back into the slickest bun. I straighten it. I dye it. It needs some TLC. I think it's been like a month I've been doing heatless. I've used heat on it once and it was only the front bits. Most of you know, usually my hair is like super frizzy and like this awkward curl. This is my hair not straightened. Like this was air dried and it's because I put Olaplex. I get it from my hairdresser and they say to leave it in your hair as long as possible. Well, I really, <laughs> I really ran with that idea and I put it in my hair in the nighttime and I left it all night and all the next day and I washed it the next day. It feels so soft. 2021, it's the year of thick, luscious hair. I'm gonna go heatless. So I thought we would just do my skincare routine. I'm gonna make an effort to do my morning routine again. I used to not be able to leave the house if I hadn't cleansed, I'd feel disgusting. These days I wake up, I go to the gym and I come home and sometimes go straight into a meeting or I'm straight with Fox. It's just like the circumstance has changed. One goal that I set myself like five years ago that transformed my skin was being not only consistent with my morning and nighttime skincare routine, but investing in it. So there's certain parts of my life that I'm really happy to spend my money or spend extra, and one of them is skincare. You don't need to buy the most expensive brands because believe me, I have some really expensive brands and I hate them. But I do think you need to dabble with different brands and different serums and different products. So yeah, that was one goal that I made a few years ago and now it's, I mean, it used to be second nature to me. I still do invest in my skincare but I need to get better at doing my skincare routine in the morning because I do notice a huge difference in my skin texture also I usually use my vanity planet skin brush but it's out of battery because I just found out that Kurt let Fox play with it in the shower. So I kept like coming up to it being like, I swear I just changed the batteries. Why is, why is this dying? Anyway, now I know for like Fox's 20 minute shower or bath, he just puts it on and rubs it all over his body. So thanks. This year is honestly the first year I have felt super balanced, especially in my health and fitness lifestyle. I love my training style. I love the way I eat. I eat intuitively. I don't obsess over food. I don't think about food too much. I don't resent the gym. I love the way I train. And my goals used to be like, lose this many kilos or eat intuitively, stop counting calories, don't over snack, don't eat after dinner. And now I feel like I'm 28. I've had Fox. I'm a mom. I just have such a better relationship with food and fitness. I don't want to set 
set myself any specific strict goals because I'm at such a good place with my body. For me, 2021 is about balance of motherhood, lifestyle, business, and everything in between. So a lot of my goals are like balance, but in the past, they were very heavily health and fitness. 2021 is gonna be off to a good start because morning skincare routine is done. So one of my goals, it's like very random, but very relevant for me, it is to not buy any more protein balls. Protein balls are like $4.50 where I live. Gone are the days of $2 date protein balls. I have all the ingredients here. I refuse to buy protein balls out. And one of my goals for 2021 is every single week prep different protein balls. Let's say you buy like two protein balls a week, potentially four like myself. You've just saved yourself four times four, 16, 17, 18, 18, is that right? Whatever. You've saved yourself nearly $20 if you buy four protein balls in a week. So this is the consistency you want. You want to be able to squeeze it and it's going to stay in a ball. So it has to be sticky enough to maintain that ball shape. Not too dry that it's going to be crumbly and not too sticky that it's sticking to your hands. This is actually a momentous moment because we're going to Baby Bunting to buy you a potty. Uh -uh. Oh. Hey, poop. Ah. Oh, smelly poo -poo. See, he wasn't leaving us. He started crying because he thought you were driving off. I would never leave we you. We wouldn't leave you like that. I want to stop feeling guilty when my mum is watching Fox and I'm having a work day. I want to get rid of mum guilt on work days and vice versa. When I have a Fox day, I want to get rid of guilt that I should be like doing emails and editing and things like that. I just want to kind of like live more in the present, embrace my mum days, embrace my work days. A lot of my friends who I talk to who also have businesses, it is a massive struggle as well, like not feeling guilty either way. So 2021 is not only finding balance, but being okay if I feel unbalanced and just not feeling guilty for either one. Does that make sense? Like, it's it's like a mindset. 2021 for me is like a mindset game, you know? Just have less pressure on myself. That's really the goal. Less pressure on myself. Sarah's become the one that's not confident in public like vlogging and I'm now the shameless one. What the heck, man? See? KC. COVID killed my confidence. Here you go. Sit on the bucket. This is your new house. Go. Yeah, yeah, bucket. bucket. Like we can either get this. Yeah, there's balloon. It's. I know. I can't get it though. It's not ours. Sorry. Nah, he needs one. He needs one. <laughs> Test it out. Sit on it. Oh, it's like a potty. It's a toilet. Can you sit on it? Sit on the toilet. No. Don't stand in it. No, no, oh, you around. just got poo on your shoe. Do you like that one? Do you like it? Do you like this one? Ooh. Your turn. Right, your turn. Your turn. Yeah, big one. Yeah, big one. And yeah, then high five, Daddy. Yeah. It has a flush button. He loves flushing the toilet, so he'll love this. I, Going I, to the toilet I, I is a game, Sarah. It is. <laughs> Look at Abby just standing there like a creep. Are you in or you're out? Literally, every time I come in here and try to train, someone is in here standing and watching, whether it's Abby, Fox, or Kurt, like in my house, you're never 
truly alone. This may sound really weird to some people, but one of the best things that ever happened to me and my fitness routine and just like my relationship with my body was getting pregnant. Now, I'm not condoning going out and getting pregnant to love your body. I don't mean that at all. I noticed after some self-reflection and like experiencing pregnancy and experiencing postpartum recovery, I am so much more confident in my body now and even when I was pregnant than ever before. Body confidence is so much about my mindset, my relationship, relationship with food, my relationship with training and being pregnant really kind of not kickstarted it, but it set me in a different gear and I had to learn to love my body regardless of what I was looking like and really focus on how I was feeling. I don't know, 2020, I have a really great relationship with my body and my fitness routine. So with that in mind, I don't want to set myself unrealistic goals or get into a bad relationship with fitness where I'm setting myself really strict rules for 2021. So back in the day, I would set myself um, challenges where I said, oh, I remember this was like two years ago. You guys might remember this vlog. I said I had to run 5K every day. No way, okay, I know my body better than I ever have in my life right now. And if I told myself I had to run 5K every day, I would laugh at myself. Like my knees and my ankles could just like not do that. I'm not a runner. It's just not great on my joints. Reflecting on my past fitness goals, I would tell my past self and I would encourage you to be super flexible and realistic with your goal because I feel like when we go into a new year, we're super motivated and we tend to create really unrealistic resolutions for ourselves that we end up not achieving and then we feel guilty. So I remember the 5k a day. I think I did it for like nearly a month and I just got burnt out. After doing that for 30 days, I just couldn't be bothered. And then I skipped a day and I felt really like weak within myself and I felt guilty that I didn't do my goal and it was only one month into the year, but like that was such an unrealistic goal. So now going into 2021, my goals for fitness are very flexible. I have two specific ones. One of them, I said this last year and I sucked at it, but I'm gonna try again to stretch more and work on my handstands. So before I had Fox, I was so confident and I was like so skilled in handstands and the splits and like yoga flows. And then obviously when you get pregnant, that just kind of like goes out the window. So my strategy is even if I don't feel like foam rolling or stretching or like doing anything, I'm literally just going to come and sit here in the gym or sit in the Pilates room because honestly this sounds really weird but if I go and sit on those mats my body has the habit of when I'm in this room I move so I'm just gonna like do some stretches foam rolling maybe practice my handstands hey sorry it's me from the future you'll actually see me in this situation later on in the vlog but I realized while editing that I forgot to um, segue this scene I've compiled a list of my 12 favorite ab exercises that really helped strengthen and sculpt my abs after after having a baby. Enjoy the burn. spoken so much in this vlog and like shut up Sarah I get it but I'm just saying if there's one exercise you take from this whole workout make it this one because my abs are still sore from doing this three days ago opposite hand to opposite knee make sure you do that just make sure you're not putting your right hand to your right knee it's right hand to left knee and you want to squish the block as hard as you can if you don't have a block you can also use like a rolled up jumper you can use a ball even just use your hand and squish it as hard as you can so already doing that your abs should be shaking like pull your other leg up in a 90 degree angle and you're going to extend and come back extend come back and you have to do that 20 times on each leg Make sure you maintain that push, that tension the entire time. If you relax, you're not gonna get the benefits or the effects of this actual exercise.
probably gonna make absolutely no sense to you, but just bear with me for a second. To have more smoothies. Now, I know you're probably thinking, what the heck, Sarah, you have protein smoothies all the time. The answer is no, I used to. So I, you guys know from my vlogs, I would have a protein smoothie every single day or a protein bowl. And I kind of thought about it and I realized I have not had a daily smoothie or it's not a part of my normal day for so long. And it's because I'm in the kitchen every single day creating new recipes for my cooking project. Every single day I'm making a new recipe so I don't really have my usual routine. Like I don't have a normal breakfast, lunch and dinner. I have something different every single day. And every now and then I'm making smoothies and smoothie bowls to test. And I really, really miss them. Number one, my sweet tooth kicks in at 3 p.m. hardcore. Back in the day, eight years ago, I would have wanted Skittles or chocolate or like a donut. And every now and then, that's fine. But every single day at 3 p.m., it's gonna catch up on you. So I like to find healthy alternatives that are going to satisfy my sweet tooth and also encourage the healthy life I'm trying to develop. It is a really good chance for you to sneak in some vegetables, some healthy fats, maybe some superfoods that you wanna put into your diet. So for me, there's like a few key ones I will always put in my smoothie. The first one is a healthy source of fat and specifically omega-3s. When I was healing my hormonal acne and helping my hair grow, very relevant right now, I really focused on omega-3 fatty acids and I genuinely believe that made such a huge impact in my skin. It's just like a part of my normal day now. So one of my favorite sources of omega-3 is flaxseed oil. I keep this one in the fridge and honestly just do a teaspoon in your smoothie, you don't even taste it. And then in terms of superfoods, one that I really like, I swear, whenever I'm about to get sick, like if I feel a sore throat, have a little bit of this in my smoothie. But camu powder, you can get a bunch of different brands. Obviously this is the Tropica one, but camu powder, it says it's 50 times more vitamin C per gram than oranges. So I kind of use this as my vitamin C, but I just put a little teaspoon or like half a teaspoon even into my smoothie. Oh, also, I haven't actually tried this product yet, but I'm gonna give it a go. Don't tell me who stole it. Kind of on that healthy fats wavelength. I haven't tried this yet. I opened it, I smelled it. Was that weird? The Nutripica MCT oil. If you were into like bulletproof coffee and all that stuff, you may have heard of this, but there's been a lot of research in terms of MCT oil and like brain focus and cognitive development. Contributes to regular laxation. Regular laxation. That is just looking like banana bread if you ask me. One banana. I like a lot of ice in mine. I never really measure anything when it comes to my smoothies. A little bit of water. All right, YOLO, we're making a smoothie. We may as well put everything in it, right? So I just like my smoothies to be like sweet and like dessert-like. Do I do my protein powder, my cookie dough, or do I do a chocolate? Cookie dough. So this is my vegan cookie dough protein with Tropica. I do like a heat, heat tablespoon, if you can see that. ABC butter, so this is like almond, Brazil, and cashew butter. I'm not really the hugest fan of peanut butter. I much prefer almond. I feel like it's a lot sweeter and creamy. A little sprinkle of salt, flaxseed oil, for my healthy omega-3s. Is that it? I swear I'm forgetting something. Oh, I know, I know one tablespoon of cacao nib. This just adds the yummiest crunchy factor. <gasps> no! I was looking at the camera and not what I was doing. No! Does this mean 2021 is off to a bad start? No, it doesn't. It means that I can laugh at myself, okay, people? It's the next day. I kind of want to talk about something that's been on my mind lately and it's free the nip I'm all for body positivity women embracing their bodies and having equal rights like the nipple But I just mm, I love this top like Instagram wise. I love it with no bra like I love the look but like I have breastfeeding nipples, you know, like post breastfeeding nipples and again, there's nothing wrong with that Don't take me out of context here. I just when I look in the mirror, all I can see is my nipples. Like I can't see my outfit, I can't see my hair, I just see my nipples. And like I never wear a bra with this boob tube because I don't wear a bra to give me fullness. I literally wear a bra to cover my nipples. Like I'm telling you, once you breastfeed, they just, they pop out. Don't think I'm there yet to wear this top. Not for me, not for me today. 
These are the bras I wear, they're literally the best, and they're called My First Bra. Yes, they're a beginner bra, and I love them. So I think I like this outfit, I've never worn it before, but I'm really into like the neutrals right now. But right now, it's actually the last day of 2020, and I need to go and make a salad. I feel like I've been really bad at telling you my actual goals in this vlog, so I'm bringing back the book of my terrible, that's one goal I should have, is to practice my handwriting, because I literally write like a three-year-old toddler. Anyway, I'm gonna start cutting these mangoes for my mango salad while we talk about my last goals and just, I actually am productive in this vlog. I find it really hard to like vlog a day in the life and, um like give tips and tricks at the same time because I like to talk about what I'm, anyway, shut up. A goal that I'm actually very excited about in 2021, that was really creepy, is to read more. I haven't been reading books at all lately. So one book I really want to read is I went and bought this book the other day. I love bookstores and I just buy a bunch of books and I never read them. My favorite books in the past have been like true crime, which is super random because it's like totally opposite of what you would expect me to like. But I loved like Marching Powder, Snowing in Bali. Is it Hotel Corobican? I think it was that one. Anyway, one that I bought from the bookstore the other day was The Path to Longevity. And it's just all about like how to live longer. It's like fitness and health and whatever. So I want to dabble through that. Oh, P.S. This is the best mango hack ever for like slicing mangoes. You'll see. You'll see. I really want to try to read the Bible from front to back. And ooh, I don't know. I feel like... Maybe that's a goal for 2022. Like if I'm not a reader anyway, I know some parts of the Bible are like really intense. They're not an easy read. I don't know. So I think I'm just going to like dabble with some books, see how I feel, and then maybe I will tackle the Bible. How good is that? You get the whole cheek of mango. I don't fully know what this salad is going to be, but I just know it's going to be like chili, mango, chicken. One more goal that I feel like we could all do. I'm not proud of this cupboard. Not only is it extremely unorganized, it's messy, it's chaotic, it has no structure, but there's a lot of plastic. There's a lot of packaging and little Ziploc things. There's just, there's a lot going on. And in 2021, I want to buy as much as I can from like the bulk health food stores. You know where like you bring your own container, you bring your own jar and you just fill it up and pay for the weight that you buy. I really want to do that. So I'm going to try to buy most of our nuts and seeds, gluten-free pasta and all that kind of stuff from the bulk health food store. If I'm being completely honest, I could make a two hour vlog, maybe even more of all the goals I set myself that got myself to the place I am now. Not even like business-wise or health and fitness, but even mentally, I just, I don't know. I'm really proud of how far I've come and the goals I've set myself and what I've achieved. And I don't want to bore you by like saying all the cliche goals that you should set yourself. Like wake up earlier, write down your goals. But seriously, you really should write down your goals because it keeps you accountable. That could be a whole nother video in itself. I think I want to end this video by saying, be kind on yourself and be realistic with your goals and the resolutions you set for next year. Because like I said before, if you set something that's like really intense, potentially unachievable, you end up feeling guilty and deflated and like ain't nobody got time for that in 2021. Let's just focus on being happy, having a work-life balance, surrounding ourselves with positive people, maybe eating a little healthier, maybe having some more vegetables, maybe getting outside more, trying a different workout. Like there's so many beneficial goals and resolutions that you can set yourself. But honestly, if I don't stop this vlog now, I'm going to keep talking and I'm not gonna have time to edit this and get it up for you in time for the new year because I want you to watch this and like go into 2021 ready to smash it. Thank you so much for following me this year and being by my side and all your lovely comments and support. You don't understand how much that means to me. Even on Instagram, I was just posting all the memories from 2020 of like Fox learning to crawl. Like how can he jump now? And this year he learned to crawl. Like that is crazy. But just the comments from you guys and everyone saying, oh my gosh, I remember this. It's like, you genuinely feel like a part of our family, that we just FaceTime all the time. So thank you for being such positive little bubbles of light in our life. And I'm excited to see what 2021 brings. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up because it really supports my channel. And I will see you next year. Bye.